Hey everyone, Happy New Year! I hope you had a fantastic 2017 and you sketch or draw or painted a lot. For me, I fill up half of this sketchbook. I'm going to give you a sketchbook tour soon, but um, in today's video, I'm going to do some homework. I'm going to color this sketch that I drew last week at Boogie's Junction. So I said that I wasn't going to color this, but I actually went back to the place again to take some reference photos so that I can color it because um, if the whole sketchbook has colored drawings and if one piece is not colored, I think it looks a bit out of place. So I'm going to color this today. So this is the reference photo and this is the decoration at Bugis Junction. As you can see, this is a very cloudy, overcast day. So there are no harsh shadows. So it looks a bit flat. Everything looks a bit flat. But the main thing that stands out, of course, is this pink color decoration. All right, so let's get started. I have my sketch. Let me show you some new brushes that I have for 2018. I have to give a big thanks to Clara from Streets Art because these three brushes they were given to me by her. She works at Streets Art which is an art supply store here in Singapore. I have the video in the video description below. You should check it out because their store is very beautiful and very well stocked. So let's take a look at these three brushes. We have this Color Pro series, Pure Red Sable. Sable hair brushes have really sharp tips and they go back to their original shapes very easily. This is a size 6. I think Color Pro is a Japanese brand if I am not wrong. And this is Navskaya Palitra, size 6. The hair is Kolinsky Sable. And this is the brush that I bought a few years ago. This is a size 6. You can see how the colors have sort of changed. It started to become yellow. My brush is no longer as sharp compared to the new brush, but it's still very usable. I still use it very frequently. And notice the bulge, this bulge of the hair. It can hold a lot of water. I don't really know the main differences between Red Sable and Kolinsky Sable. To me, they perform very similarly. They both hold a lot of water and they can retain a sharp tip. And lastly, I have this Color Pro brush. It looks like a squirrel brush. There is no mention of what hair it is but it's most likely squirrel because of the shape. This is from series 2803. So brushes they are labeled according to their series. The Navskaya that's from series 1113 and the Color Pro Sable is 2250. Squirrel brushes can hold a sharp tip as well and this particular brush has quite a large um, bristle. This is size 1. Different types of watercolor brushes, they go by different sizes. So the Sable size 6, it's actually smaller than the size 1 squirrel. Both brushes hold a lot of water but the squirrel brush at this size, it holds significantly more water. Now one of the main characteristics of um, the Sable is its ability to spring back to shape. So Notice how the tip, how it will go back to shape. Compare that to the squirrel. If you move the tip like this, the hair, it doesn't spring back to the shape. So these brushes, they are usually used for um, creating large washes. They are also known as mop brushes. And even across different brands, the size may differ as well. Both of these are sable brushes size 6 but this is slightly smaller compared to the Navskaya Palitra. And these two brushes, the sable brushes, they are good for details. 
this is good for covering large areas. I'm going to try and paint this sketch with as few strokes as possible. So I'm going to be using my Marie Blue watercolors again. Let me mix a large wash of neutralized warm tone. So I'm using this warm yellow. I'm going to use a blue. This is ultramarine. And I'm going to use this red here. So let me just use this mop brush and color this. You can see how the shape of the mop brush, it's not able to retain, go back to its um, sharp point. So this is great for creating large washes because of the size. Let me color this part here with some green. I'm going to mix the green with yellow and blue. And there is some green as well on the left, bottom left corner. I painted, sorry, I drew this sketch on the 23rd of December, two days before Christmas. And now I'm going to use the sable brush to paint the trees on the left side. Maybe I use this same color to paint some of the people. And now I'm going to color this. Some of the, some parts of this dress is actually a bit darker because they are under the shade. And some parts are lighter because they are reflecting off light. So for this parts here, I will just paint them, paint them a bit lighter. Okay, I think this shall, um, this is good enough. I forgot the part at the top. This sketchbook that I'm using is a Kunz and Papier sketchbook that features 35% cotton. It's uh, 160 GSM paper. It's quite thin. The paper is buckling quite significantly and I can feel that the moisture on the surface of the paper, it actually went to the other page. So it's not very thick paper. And for the last wash, I'm going to paint the shadow. So let me just start by mixing some darker washes to uh, color parts of the left side. I'm going to work my way from left to right. So the windows on this side, they are very dark. I think the paper hasn't dried yet, so some of the colors may actually just blend together. This is a green and a red. I use this to color the tall trees. I'm not sure if it will work, but I think it's all right. And the other dark green area is this part. For that, I will use a larger brush because it's quite a large area. You see this My Marie Blue paint, it has this gooey consistency. Even though I have left the uh, colors to dry for a long time on the, on the table, but it still has this very gooey consistency. So they do not dry completely. I guess it makes it easier for um, the colors to re-wet. Okay, and some parts here. Painting the details is where using a smaller brush will be very helpful. You know what, I think I shall just paint very quickly just to make it more spontaneous as if I'm painting on location.
There's this water fountain on the far right. I'm going to use gouache for that. And for the tiny dots, I'm going to be a bit careful. Just add in little tiny dots here and there. If it's a bit difficult, um, I do find it a bit difficult, so I'm going to use the gel pen. I also want to bring out some of the lines here with the white gel pen. Actually, if you plan in advance, you can just color this block uh, black or some dark shapes without the lines. And then after that, add the white gel pen. Now it's a bit distracting because there are white lines and there are also black lines. So this is the completed sketch. The paper is really not very good. See here, some of the water is almost soaking through. I did not color the sky because it was really cloudy. So these are the people on the street. Now notice some of the colors, they blend together, the shapes are not that obvious. I can actually just um, draw in some highlights to make sure that the head stands out. Notice all the people, all the eye level, they are sort of at the same level. That's because I was drawing from the same eye level. And here, this person, the head, it doesn't stand out from the background, so I can add in some highlights as well. Ideally, you should do that uh, with watercolor, but well, for me, it doesn't really matter that much. And this is the main decoration. I can almost see the paper fiber coming on top of the watercolor. I definitely prefer working on location because it's more fun and satisfying. But sometimes you cannot finish the whole sketch, the coloring at the location. So in this case, I have to do it at home. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. And Happy New Year to all of you. Bye.